All right, here we go. Yo, 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 what up, though, man? I have here on Mogul State of Mind, the man, the myth, the legend, the, one of the probably the most prolific, shadowy figures in Detroit history. Um, people know you from running. If you ever heard of this story, you've known from running with the crew, best friends, doing your own thing. Welcome to Mogul State of Mind, Nate Boone Craft. How you doing, my guy? I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. So the first time I ever run into you was on Al Prophet page, man, and just going down through the whole Detroit history of gangsters and everything. And your story came up and seeing you talk, man, my mind is blown back. So I'm excited to capture your journey. Um, the upbringing, um, Nate Boone Craft, are you, where are you come up from? Where are you originally from? East side of Detroit. Hmm. We came up from Mississippi, but I was born on the east side of Detroit. And uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> back then it was kind of rough and tough, but mm. I never was one to be a follower or hang out and play games. Mm. I was all the way out there hustling. So I started hustling from the age of nine. Nine years old. I was old. out there selling heroin and shit with, up with this guy named Charlie. And uh, by the time I turned 10, we had a falling out. Hmm. Me and my friend, Jerm, I guess I can say his name because he's dead. He passed away last year of COVID. But uh, we had to talk to him and we told him, hey, man, did this, man. You got to give us some more money. <laughs> I ain't giving y'all nothing. Y'all y'all should be happy that I'm letting you work. I said, we don't want bringing in your money. I mean, you got to understand, these people ain't wouldn't paying you nothing. When you hired me, what did you do? Tell me to go get the money from them. Did I not come back with the money? Yes. So you got to understand, we need more money. Now, either we going to give it to us or we're going to go our way and start our own shit. You talking about, you ain't going to do nothing. I'll beat you all ass. That's one. He said, what the fuck you mean one? I said, that's one. You don't threaten me and keep on thinking that I'm going to sit here and take it. He said, I'll beat both of y'all. Friend James said, that's two. He told me, what's going to happen when you get to whatever number? You find out, ah, whoa, 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 we blast his ass oh, right there. Shit. Hey, if we got to say three, we ain't going to say it. You'll never hear it. <laughs> oh, shit. Took that motherfucker out back and buried him in his backyard. Went back in, took all his shit. <laughs> Damn. By the time they found that stinky body, the whole neighborhood was stinky. They were like, damn, something foul. <laughs> oh, shit. So, you know, I started at 10, start pushing that until I ran out of it that he had. And then I talked to Frank and see if Frank would sell to me. I know I'm a kid, but you got to, it should look at my record, man. People out here knows me, and they know I'm going to get my money, and I'm going to give you yours. Matter of fact, I got yours up front. You're like, man, get your little, he start looking around like, like he been set up. Yeah. No, man, ain't no set up, man. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this bag on this table. There's a phone number there. Call me if you think that you can make something happen. I got up and walked away, and my friend was sitting behind him which he didn't know, just in case he got stupid. <laughs> we both walked out the door. Within like three hours, I got a call on that phone, rotary phone back then, yeah. you know. And he said, uh, listen, come back up there to that restaurant. I need to talk to you. I said, okay, I go up there, but he wasn't in there. He was sitting in the car. I'm like, he said, come on, get in. This don't sound right. I said, yeah, but my friend is woofing. He said, Come on. Damn, y'all two short motherfuckers. I said, yeah. So we got in the car, drove around over on uh, Emerson, down by Pew. And he said, uh, you see that can over there? I said, yeah. I think somebody left something in there. So I tell him to go get it. Tell him to go over there and bed. He said, uh-uh, you can't get back in the car with it. <laughs> Ain't no thing. He said, give me a call when you are uh, ready to talk again. 
we never said the word drugs or anything. Yeah. So we left, went back to uh, Tyler's house since he was, you know, deceased. So we used his house up for almost like three months before that body really started stinking. And we go there and cut it up, bag it up, put it out there. At that time, we decided to change the name to Do to Die. Mm. That people know you do this, you can die. But you better step on it a little bit because we ain't step on it. At all. Just that much. Oh, no, we yeah. stepped on it. But we didn't step on it that much. We might put a one or a two cut on it. Got you. But you better put the rest. People was loving it. They was looking around, hey, man, where that do to die? Because nobody <laughs> knew it was us until way later until, until I started selling to my sister friends. Yeah. And they went and told my sister, hey, your brother trying to beat me up. He said, who? Pop? Willie? Who? And I'm like, no, nah, boom. Boom. My little brother? My baby brother? And, of course, when I come to Halloween, I'm like, did you threat Jerome? Who, me? No. Why? Why would you think that? He said, he came in talking about you threatening to beat his butt. I said, for what? And... When she didn't say what for, I know he didn't tell her that he was shooting up hair around. Yeah. And he owed me money because I gave it to him on the credit. So I waited and then he popped back up at my sister's house because I stay with my sister every now and then. Popped back up. I said, check this out, man. You a goddamn rat. You can't talk to me like that. I said, that's one. Oh, we're going to throw that to two. I heard about you and that counting. I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> and while I'm saying that, Jern came out the bathroom and still behind him. He, he, he didn't know it until he heard that click in the back of his head. Click. I said, don't turn around. That'll be three. Then I got to clean my sister flow. <laughs> but then here come my sister out the kitchen. Jern put his gun back up and sat down. We just sat there looking at the TV. He was finna say something, and then I said, yeah, okay. And he shut it up. My sister, said, what's wrong? Nothing. Boom. What's going on between you and Jerome? I said, ain't nothing going on. He just made at me because his girlfriend liked me. <laughs> you ain't nothing but 10, maybe 11. She's 16, 17. I said, yeah, I like them old like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> and of course, I did have his girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Shit. She liked me because I had that old black straight hair because my mother injured, so okay. I took after her with the hair. <sighs> yeah, that picked me up from that until I got, I ain't quite sure what age I was when they locked me up in the youth home. So take it back just a little bit. How was it a 10-year-old? Like, what was your family dynamic that you end up being in the streets? Like, what was your your mom, your dad, things of that nature, you know, growing up in the house? Well, mom had a big, well, there's a big family of us. Yeah. So mom was always working. Dad was working. Then when he wasn't working, he was in the Army. But I didn't like the way I see my sisters and brothers in them Working, coming home tired and beat. I don't want to look like y'all. So that's what made me go out there. And first, I did legal stuff. I went out there and packed grocery bags, helped people carry them home. I shined shoes. I fixed shoes. The man at the shoe store gave me that chance. He showed me how to fix the shoe, keep them shined, and so forth. Then I started going up to it's at Bilo. Back then, there's a store called Bilo. And and it's the a &P. So I used to go up there and hustle from there, tell people, I can put your bags in your car. I can carry them home because I know who you are and I know where you live. They said, yeah, boom, we know you. You just a helpful little guy. I said, I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> they would give me money or cookies and stuff. Well, money ain't cookie. Mm. Aggie used to always give me a big bag of cookies. We were like, she be baking her butt off giving cookies to the kids in the neighborhood. But, uh, yeah, I started off from that point because I didn't like to come home beat and shit like my sisters and brother were that working for Chrysler mm -hmm. and shit. And my sister worked for 
the welfare department back okay. then. So I just said, well, I can make money if I go sell some of that stuff that these kids out here selling. Then I found out what it was, Heron. I sat back and I watched them and observed them, see where they was going. I said, okay, they, they got to be getting it from him. I didn't know he was a drug dealer. Mm. When they left, I go up there and knock on the door. He come to the door and I tell him, hey, man, can I work for you? He said, who are you and why? Wait a minute, ain't you little boom, little two doors down? I said, yeah. Man, you too little for this. I said, size don't make a man. <laughs> so, of course, he said, man, I don't know, man, because I know your sister. I said, what that got to do with it? Is you going to go tell her? He said, you kind of got a smart mouth. I said, no, I'm just telling you on how it lay out. Yeah. Give me the opportunity to show you. Give me some packs and let me go sell them. And then if I do a good job and people that owe you money, tell me about it. I go get the money for you. Well, how you going to get money from these big grown people? I, I got my ways. Who, who, who did, how did you get that aggression? Like, cause I, you, I guess because when I was in school, they used to pick on me. Mm. And, um, I didn't like to fight, but after my sister told me, boy, you better not be running home no more. You better not be running from nobody. Either you fight them or you fight me. I'm going to fight them. Because <laughs> I know my sister would beat the hell out of me. Yeah. She had reached up under the bed one day and pulled the bed up and beat the shit out of me because <laughs> I had because I, I, I had snuck out the house. I used to tie the sheets together, keep them hidden under the bed. Then as soon as everybody gets settled in the house, Throw him out the window and clam down. One day she found out that poor the sheet up. Yeah. So when I get back, like, what does she say? <laughs> Leroy. That's oh, that's my little brother, one year younger than me. Toss the sheet down. So Louise told me I bet not. <laughs> I said, well, you gonna listen to me, me or her? I'm listening to Louise because Louise will beat me like she beat you. I said, Ugh. so I go to the front door, knock on the door, and I told her that. I was in the backyard, just playing. <laughs> you know, why you didn't come down? I, I did not want to disturb nobody. You, you slick got a little slick little <laughs> mouth and talk about you, but I know you wasn't in the backyard because I looked out there on the back porch. I'm like, I probably was across the street that journey because my boy Jeremy lived right across the street. Me and him grew up together. We were the same age. His mother and like my sister used to always hang out together and shit. So that's how I got caught up in that situation, always sneaking out. And at nighttime is when, is when the money was to be made. Yeah. Down there on Continental and Few, Jefferson and Continental, up and down Jefferson, I had to make money. So in this time, <clears throat> what year is this for you when you at 10 years old? 1967. So this is before the riots and all of that, right? Yeah. So what was this Detroit? Was the ride, but during the ride, man, we used to hit the stores. <laughs> My mama told y'all stay in this house. Don't you go out there? The people out there crazy. Okay. So she don't look. I go down in the basement, sneak out the side door. I'm going up there to the store. I'm walking. To, they said, "Hey man, the damn window too small." And they looked over there and seen me. Come in, boom. What? We are gonna push it through the window and you open the door. You don't, okay. They pushed me through the window because I took my time by opening the door. I had to go open the cash register yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> I got that money stuffed it down in my pad. Then I went and opened the door and they all run to the register to me. Man, up here's a coin. And they look over at me. Look at me. <laughs> I stand there and they talking about, hmm. somebody get some bags or something. Let's bag up all this. I said, turn, go get the cart. Man, him start loading the cart up. <laughs> we run it down the street with the or with the food cart loaded. We take it to the side door. My uh, my my brother Willie and my sister and them there. So we push the door open. We just dump the cart up in there. <laughs> Yo, what the hell you doing? Just hide it. Just hide. I'm going to get some more. <laughs> so we run out the store and then I find out that they breaking into the gun shop. Oh shit! I'm like. 
we can take guns? They said, probably ain't no more in there. Me and Johnny went in there and we found them. <laughs> Hit them. <laughs> they had about three boxes still underneath the counter that was up. We got them, threw them in the cart. Then we, load, then we loaded up uh, bowing arrows, knives, especially knives, because I love to play with knives. Mm. I played with knives since I was a little fella that I learned how to throw them, how to use them, and so forth. That's why I got the nickname Boom. Mm. Like Daniel Boone. Got you. Yeah. So I got that name and uh, I loaded up with him. After we loaded up, took him back to the thing, we dumped that in. At that time, they was driving through the street with the bullhorn. Everybody inside, martial law and this and that. Then here come the army. What, we finna fight? Shit, got the army coming down the street, forcing people off the street and this and that. And the police, they basically were scared because the Black Panther was keeping them away from us. Yeah. Black Panther was on top of the roof telling me, you better get your ass off the street. So when the army came, the police just left. The army took over. Now, at that time, you got to understand, a lot of army guys was using drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize that until, you know, like, they were sitting out there and I seen them tooting and Shooting needle. Hey man, what you doing? Oh, oh no, oh no, little fella, you don't want to look at this. I said, is is that some of this? <laughs> I pulled out the bag. He said, what? what's that? I said, hey, Ron, it's good too. It's do to die. He said, what that mean? If you do this like it is, you may die. So you might want to step on it a couple of times. You can scratch it out, and make it, and get more. Man, that dude shot that up just like it was. He was like, oh. <laughs> when he came out that night, I was like, okay, that's $12. <laughs> he was like, well, I, man, that shit was good. Here, man. You go, 25, give me another pack. I said, get as many as you want. He said, little fella, you out here selling? I said, hell yeah, gotta make some money. <laughs> so he started telling his other friends and they, Catch me or Jern coming around, and they stop us and we get unpacked. They were drinking liquor, so we went down to the basement and grabbed liquor and brought it back. Hey, we got that too. <laughs> we got everything. Anything you need, man, we got right here. Come down to 814 Continental. We got it all. Man. So, so they came down there, sat on the porch with my sisters and them, and they was kicking in and talking, and we was coming from the side of the house selling them shit. At that time, what was it? I think it was the police that was up on Continental and Jefferson behind the church. Me and Jerry, we had hid our uh, stuff up there, so we go up there to get it, but we see the police car pulled up in the alley. I'm like, man, the police, I hope they ain't got our stuff. And of course, uh, that time the body was really stinking, had the whole neighborhood smelling like skunk. Mm. So, we go up there and we sneak up on the car trying to figure out what the hell he in there doing. He in there raping a sister. Oh. Uh. The other white man was standing there watching out for him. I'm like, the sister in there told me, don't stop, take me alone. I didn't do anything. Looked at John and said, man, don't do it. They're not even looking. We can shoot both of them in the head, man. You shoot one, I shoot the other. He said, man, that's going to bring too much trouble to us. I said, you right. So we just hid back in the little fence in the bushes and just sat there and watched. All of a sudden, they get out the car and they choked the sister to death. Mm. Then they threw her over in the garbage can. So of course, me, I go down there and uh, tell, tell my sisters and my mother, I tell anybody that would listen, what I seen. Nobody wanted to go uh, to believe me. Yeah. They didn't even want to go down there and look. I was like, I'm not lying. The police just killed that woman up there. She was behind the church and they raped her. I'm like, Don't be saying that because then you had the police going to do something to us. Don't worry about them doing nothing to me. They ain't the only one got guns. My mama said, what? Boy, come in. I'm like, oh, <laughs> open my big mouth. You too, John, come in. They both walked up there. She grabbed both of them by the shirt. Come in. She put one between her legs and locked it. That was Jerry. <laughs> she grabbed me and went to pat me down. She said, where you get this gun from? I said, from 
from the gun store. She's so dry, dry and talking about <laughs> tickles. <laughs> I'm laughing like a big dog. Like <laughs> she found he had two guns on. I didn't even know he carried two. I thought he just had the one. She found both guns, one in the front and one behind the back of his pants. I'm like, man, I could have been carrying two. My mom looked over at me. What? <laughs> what the hell y'all? I said, Nothing, ma. We were just playing cowboys and engine. <laughs> Using real guns? Ain't that what they use, ma? Boy, y'all better not shoot nobody with these things. We, we didn't. Mom took the gun. Louise, Louise got them from her. And I think Pop stole them from them and sold the damn thing. <laughs> but about seven months later, I had, to, I had to get a car. I couldn't be walking everywhere, so I asked my brother Pop, will he buy a car? I give him the money, you buy it, put it in your name. You tell my boy, I ain't buying you no car, I'm get in trouble. Well, if I give you extra hundred dollars every month. Boy, you better not get me in no trouble getting this car. Say, okay, I won't. Go get me a suicide door, Continental. He said, no. How about that green Fleetwood Broham with the gangster tires on it? He said, do you got enough money for it? How much you need? He told me, I said, Jeremy, go get the money. Jeremy came back. He was like, when the hell y'all come with all this money? I said, don't ask me that. Here go the money. Here go $200 for you, $100 for me, $100 for Jeremy. Just go get us the car. He went and bought the car. My brother was using drugs too, though. But he went and got the car and brought it back. He was like, Boy, y'all better not be getting in no trouble because I'm telling the police I don't know how y'all got the car. Y'all stole my car while I was sleeping. So I said, that's cool. So we riding around in the car and girls looking like, man, those two kids. <laughs> we may be kids, baby, but uh, we grown. Look at our suits. Because, you know, like back then I was even wearing, I love to wear suits. I wore suits whenever I went. And, um, Wanda, Bar Wanda, she was the girl that stayed four houses down. And I used to just sit on the porch sometimes, just sit there because I ain't got nothing else to do. I sit there and watch them. Watch them. Wow. They run around playing high and go seat, tag, and all this. I never had a childhood to play all that. <clears throat> I was too much in making money. So here come Wanda up to me. They love to brush my hair and Play with my hair. I was like, my mama said that she don't want you hussies playing with my hair. <laughs> we ain't no hussy. You ain't. Hey, mom, this hussy now. <laughs> and they run back to their house and be sitting on their pool like they ain't did. Mom said, who? I said, Wanda down there who was rubbing all in my head. Wanda, ain't you 18 or something? Leave my little son alone. She said, I ain't mess with him. Oh, she going to lie on me. So when my mama went back upstairs, I go down to wine. I said, hey, check this out. Why don't you give me some, you know. Said, what? You know. <laughs> they were like, boy, you don't even know what the hell that is. I said, shh. Well, I've been screwing since I was nine, ten years old. What the hell? When y'all be playing high and go seat, I be playing high and go get it. Yeah. <laughs> I find y'all and I talk you into it and y'all always give me some. <laughs> Your cousin was giving me some. Now I want some from you. Oh, shit. She's talking about, who? I said, Loretta. What? I said, yeah. She's good at it. <laughs> she held on to my hip and just, <laughs> I like, oh my God, love. <laughs> but after she gave it to me, she didn't want to do it, but maybe three more times she did it. Then after that, she said she can't do it no more because she's going with my brother. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Me and, me and Willie going together. I said, you didn't tell him that me and you were doing that, did you? She said, hell no. You bet not either. Like, I know if I am. If he's dumb like that, but he should have knew something was going on. I was always on your porch. Yeah. When I come on your porch, I didn't come on there and just sit there and watch people run around 
playing you it, tag, jumping jacks, or all that crap y'all be playing. I be, you know, trying to hit that. And he should know that I didn't hit many of y'all out here. And he knew it because I hit y'all in my mama basement. Willie, everybody be down there playing, I ain't go get it. They cut the light on, say, okay, everybody hide. And whoever you find, you got five minutes in the dark. Lights go off, and I be watching the one I want. As soon as that light click, got this one. Somebody else, I'm going to let it go. I got you. You ain't getting shit, man. Man, you don't let what you say? Hey, man, what you doing? Shh, get away from us. Take the girl back there in the back. I have my way with her. And she was like, is you going to give me some money? Yeah, I'm going to give you a whole quarter. She said, okay. I'm like, damn, it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Then I learned how to only give them nickels. Because, you know, like way back then, nickels and quarter were, were where you get double the cookies and candy and all that. Yeah. You take 50 cents to the store, you get a big old bag of cookies. You get two for a penny. <laughs> Shit. But uh, my brother found out later on. And I guess that's what made him hate me. Mm. Like, I really give a damn. But he used to beat me up. I just didn't do nothing to him because he was my brother. So I just tell my sister, Willie keep beating me up. They fight him back. I don't know how to fight like that. So what you mean? If I fight a person, one of us got to go. Damn. We said, so what those people out there be saying that you be stabbing them? And so i like, one of us had to go. But they didn't go, did they? But if I ever catch them again, they mine. Or I better be there. So she taught me, set me down, said, boom, you can't be out there stabbing people. But I got a knife. She said, so? I said, ain't that knife what it meant for? To cut something, stab something? Your boyfriend, no. He didn't tell you that I cut his arm off, tried to cut his arm off, because he kept, re I almost told on myself, because <laughs> he kept trying to reach in my bag. I said, nothing. She told so, so she go to her boyfriend, the boyfriend told her that he's on drugs. I said, Louise, you should have been figuring that out. Don't you see him around and talking about? Nah, no. Nah. He's a junkie. I'm going to help him get off of it. <laughs> yeah, good luck <laughs> with that. Where he getting it from? Wait a minute. They said they've been getting stuff from you. Now, at that time, about six months later, police came to the house to arrest me. Because me and James stuck up bylaws. Mm. We was kind of short on money, so we said, fuck it, we're going to go up there to the AMPO Bilo and rob them. So we go in Bilo. Now we go up there and we trying to rob the place. Security guard, he going to come over there and grab us. Because we little fellas. <laughs> but he thinking the gun, we got our toys. Man, he picked me up. Man, you better put me now. Get y'all little... Boom! Oh. Didn't kill him, but it skinned the hell out of his motherfucking head. We took off running. <sighs> I, don't, I wasn't in my right frame of mind. Police came to the house and got us. They knew where we lived. Everybody told them, that's the little boom down there. They came and got me, took me to the youth home, and uh, the judge made me a ward of the court because because they said my mama got too many kids. Mm -hmm. And my mama wanted me back, but of course they said, no, nah, you got too many kids, we gonna take care of this one. I don't need nobody taking care of me. So they put me in a youth home, stayed in there for a little bit. Then from there, they sent me to Wayne County Child Development Center. Wait a minute, no. Before I went there, they put me in a foster home. And trust me, I know nothing about a foster home. I didn't know anything about people calling us coons or niggas and this and that. Nobody never said that to me. But they put me in the foster home. White folks got me. Mm. We slept up in the attic. I'm like, okay. So every day they wake us up. We go out there, brush down the horses, slop down the pigs, collect the air. The farmers taught us how to go out there and hunt. He'd give us a 22 right, go out there and bring some food back. We go out there and shoot everything that moved. So we bring all these dead animals. What the hell y'all do? You said bring something back to eat. Everything. 
Did you shoot that skunk? Said, mm-hmm. It moved. That stink. Drag it off to the side and throw it in the mud. Damn thing stink. Germ already got sprayed. <laughs> <laughs> and they took him in the house and rubbed him down with tomatoes and shit. I said, they're trying to turn you red. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, this thing's hurting the stink. I said, yeah. I told you don't get close to it yet. That damn thing wasn't totally dead. And when you walked up there, tail went up. Okay. That's what they do when they die. Mm. They scroll out. Yeah. <laughs> Got them good. But we stayed there for a little bit longer. And then uh, the, their daughters, white, kept on wanting to talk to us and talk about that. They want us to do it to them. I'm like, no. Oh. Your daddy kill us. He won't know when he go to church, we'll come upstairs. We got the keys to unlock the door and come up there. Wait, they lock y'all in when they- Oh, yes, they locked us in. 6 p.m., click, door locked. Niggas don't come out at the 6 o'clock. Wow. They want us up early in the morning, about 3 or 2, so we go start the whole day over, collecting the egg, going hunting, slop down the pigs, brush the horses, Collect all the cows and milk them. And that milk was good. I got to admit it. We milking them. They didn't have a machine. Yeah. We was their machine. <laughs> and I started tasting. I said, man, this milk kind of good. Fresh out, the, fresh out the cow. Then I learned later that he runs it through the uh, big kettles and shit. Then it comes out a little bit weaker, but all that fix up over there. She make cheese out of that shit. What's she gonna do with that? You finna eat cottage cheese later. That's what you make that stuff out of? She said, yeah. Didn't you like it? I said, yeah, you put some fruit on it. But uh, the girls come upstairs. Daddy's gone. This day, we was doing that to him for about six months. Mm. Well, this day, the daddy came home early. We didn't hear him. And we up there getting busy. <laughs> And uh, the white girl went to, ah, ah. Didn't even hear the door open. Huh? And uh man came upstairs. I mean, I'm really working now, his daughter. Only man came out here, Ma, you nigga, get off my daughter. <laughs> got mine that jumped out the window. <laughs> Jerm got his and jumped out the window. We ran over to the barn and nothing but our draws. We jumped on the horses, took them, went up to, uh, we drove them all, rode them all the way up to uh, Six Mile and Grand River. Back then, you know, it wasn't no road, I mean streets. Mm-hmm. There was road coming off a uh, Shelton Road and all that, and Bellevue, I mean, those were just dirt road. Oh, wow. And if you didn't know how to get around, and you had to use a horse most of the time just to get from there to Detroit, up on Grand River and Six Mile. But... We got up there with the horses. Police stopped us. They stopped us, and uh, they was like, uh, who horses y'all got? I forgot that man's name. But I said, uh, his horses? What y'all doing with him? Well, he was trying to kill us. What? What y'all do? What do you mean, what we did? You shouldn't be checking him. What? Why he trying to shoot us? He came up there. Told them, but he didn't tell them the truth. He just said, them niggas tried to assault my daughter. We wasn't assaulting nothing. Your daughter was begging for us to do them. See, I just want my horse. You do what you want to do with them. Don't send them back to my farm or I'll kill them. So, of course, they said, well, who in the hell are y'all? We told them my name. They ran through their little uh, paper deck. They said, oh, y'all wars up the court. Yeah. So they sent us back to the youth home. Youth home, we stayed there for a little bit. Then they sent us to Wayne County Child Development Center, WCCDC. We stayed there a long time. One day, Jerm just said, man, I got to go. So where you going? I'm going home, man. We ain't never mentioned home in so long. I'm like, home? He said, yeah, man, I'm going back to Detroit. Okay. 
We take off running through the woods. About a half an hour later, I get hungry. <laughs> I said, man, I'm hungry, man. They back there cooking uh, a spaghetti. I'm not going back. I said, well, I'm going back to eat. I catch up with you. He said, you going to really go back? I said, yeah, I'm hungry. I go back, eat. That's when they, they didn't even know that we had ran off. Yeah. They only know because after you eat, you had to stand over there for count. They were like, where is Alonzo? They looked at me. Were you a friend? I don't know. I'm not his daddy. They checked the ground, checked all the, uh, all the cottage, couldn't find them. So some of the other kids, I'm, I seen them going in the woods. So when the guard left, I went over there and hit the kid in the head with a baseball bat. Boom! Ooh. Bitch. So I had him in the head with a baseball bat. I took off. But first I broke the man's car window. Take, take something like that. I broke his window before I left. Boom! You will be driving that damn car. By the time I got up to Grand, Grand River and Six Mile, I mean, that's a long walk from Shelton Road, 16th out to Shelton Road. I get up to Grand River and I'm like, oh, man, I should have put some clothes on. <laughs> I ain't got no shoes on. It's winter. Ooh. Bitch, alert, alert, bitch, alert, alert. Got no shoes on. It's my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I get home. Jerem already done uh, running the streets. His mama didn't care one way or the other. Mine's cared, but I was a wild child, so my mama told me, boy, you better sit right here because those people coming for you because they called us. So they coming for me. Yeah. I'm sitting there, sure enough, police pulled up, handcuffed me. My sister was pregnant at this time, and she crying and boo-hooing. Oh, you don't take uh, Whatever. They handcuffed me, and they take me back to the youth home. I wind up getting sent back to Wayne County's Child, Child Development Center. When I get back there, I got into a fight. Within two days, they locked me up in the quiet room. So when I get out the quiet room, the kid I hit with the bat, of course, he talking mess. So I'm like, I sit down at the table. I'm, I'm finna eat my oatmeal. He stick his finger in my oatmeal. Like, Is it warm? I don't want to go back to the quiet room. So I just pushed it over there towards him. Peeled back my banana, get ready to eat it, and he spit. <laughs> Oh, man, tears start running down my face. I want to kill this boy. So I get up and I go over there, stand by the wall. And he telling everybody, see that? He's a coward. He turns around, still talking mess about me. I looked over at the closet. I see the bats in there. I look back at his head. Look back at the closet. Looked at his head. We stood there and got the bat. And I start tiptoeing up there on everybody at the table. Push back. <laughs> and the kid said, what the hell? By the time he turned around and looked, I caught him dead in the face. Just like that. Wham! They rushed me. I woke up in the quiet room because they beat the hell out of me. Uh, the site came and talked to me. Then went and talked to the, uh, the men that ran the place. They wound up sending me to Hawthorne Center. That's a nut house. But they said, this boy got to be crazy. He just tried to take the kid's head off. We're going to charge him. Of course, you can't charge me if the boy can't say nothing because the boy didn't know who in the hell he was. Yeah. So they put me in another hospital. I stayed in there. They did the evaluation of me six months later. They called back over there, tell the people ain't nothing wrong with this boy. He just don't give a damn. Y'all can come get him. We ain't getting him here. That's our problem now. A couple weeks later, they came to me and said, they don't want you back over there. I don't know what the hell you did to those people. I ain't do nothing. I said, well, 
you can't stay here because you ain't crazy. So they gave me a bus ticket, some money, and a couple of sandwiches. And they drove me up to Grand River in six miles, said, this bus here will take you downtown. He go to the paper, last address that we had for your mother. I catch the Grand River all the way downtown. Then I catch the Jefferson down near the Continental. And I get off the Continental. I walk down Continental. And I know where I'm at now. I walk down the Continental and I don't see the house. My house will be right here. It ain't there. Lady across the street. She said, ain't you boom? Yeah. I know your sister. Where they at? She said, they moved over on, over on, on Sheridan, but she ain't quite sure. She thinks it's between uh, Kirchhoff and Mac. So I goes over that way looking for my family. I'm walking up and down the street for hours. Nighttime come, I'm tired, so I go downtown and sleeping at the bus stop. One of the girls that was hooking down there see me down there sleeping all the time, and she, had, she invited me back to her place. I get to her place, and I go to sleep. All of a sudden, I hear a Bump, 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 bump. I looked up. Some guy beating the hell out of her. So I go over there and push him away from her. He backhand me. Boom. Pull my knife out. I better <laughs> cut his ass. She jumps in front. No, no, don't, don't, don't. He just, he just hit me and he be beating you up. Boy, I cut, he pulled out his knives. We gonna be some cutting motherfuckers up in here. <laughs> he tell her, you get rid of that boy. What hell you doing with that kid in here? So he leaves. The girl come over there and said, thank you for what you're trying to do, but you can't do that. That's my pimp. Pimp? Yeah, I give him my money. I said, wait, you go out there and you sell your body. You come back and you give him the money. Make that make sense to me. She said, that's just how it is, you know, pimps and hoes. I said, I don't know nothing about it. I don't want to be involved with it. So I leave. I go back to the bus stop. I'm sitting out there in the Grand Circus bus stop, just sitting there sleeping, going and all. She came and she said that he was looking for me. <laughs> By that time, I, me and my friend met up again. So he looking for me. Okay. So I go down there to her place and I'm hiding in the bushes, waiting for him to show up. He shows up, my boy, you know, he got guns, he gives me one, he got one. I said, stay right here. I said, what you gonna do? We both can do him. I want him. So I walks up there to him and he put his hand in his pocket. I said, I heard you looking for me. Said, yeah. So what's up? He said, what's up with you? I said, well, I'm talking to a dead man. He said, what you say? Boom! <laughs> Come on, man. He comes over there, we pick him, throw him in the garbage can. And uh, I think the next day somebody noticed the body and then you know, oh, somebody threw him in the garbage can. The girl was like, what happened? Someone, they said, one of these pimps must have killed them. Of course, I wasn't nowhere around. I'm back at the bus stop. So she came up there and got me. She said, somebody killed him, somebody killed him. Kill who? Uh, my man. I said, well, he ain't your man no more. Now you keep, keep all your money. She stopped and looked at me. I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about. But this is what I'm going to do for you. You don't need no pimp to protect you. I keep a lookout for you. Me and John. So we, every night we out there watching. Then when she made her money, she come over there and give it to me. She said, you just hold it. Why are you giving it to me? This your money. Just hold on to it. I held on to it. My pocket was getting so fat. I'm like, shit. So when we get back to her place, I'm taking out the money to get it to her. She stacks it all up and count it. And she said, how much you want? I didn't make that money. She said, yeah, but you was watching me, protecting me and so forth. I said, yeah, I ain't going to let nobody do nothing to you. She cut it. 75 for me and 25 for her. Like, she said, this more money than, than you know, like that punk was giving me. Like, Damn, Damn, you giving me that much? So, so we took it. Then she went and told the other girls 
other girls start talking about it. Skinny, skinny the pimp. His girl really wanted to leave him because he was just a jackass. So they leave him and come to me and said, uh, can we work with you? We choosing you. I started learning the motherfucking dialects to the pimping game and so forth. I said, like, ain't no pimp. They said, yeah, we know that. We just want you to protect us from the other pimps. I said, that ain't no problem. They better not put their hands on you. My mama have always taught us, you don't hit no woman. And boy, if you see somebody hitting a woman, step in and beat the hell out of them. I said, okay, Ma. Because I did that once. We were going down Mac. And uh guy slapped this woman. I got out, parked the car in the middle of the street. Got out, walked over there, grabbed him from the back of his shirt and twisted him around. And I hit him in the mouth. Bam! How you like it? Man, what you think you doing? Boom! What it like I'm doing? And a couple of times, his girlfriend come over here. You beating up my man. Stop it. I said, he didn't beat you. I know, but you're going to make it worse because he really going to beat me now. No, he won't. I looked over at the car and I see my mother brother looking, so I turned sideways and put the gun in his mouth. Click. You want to live or die? Now, if you ever hit her again and I find out about it, who can kill you? Ask the screed about me. Put the gun back in my pocket and I leave. Within like a couple of hours. Got his name, but he came down because he knew my sister. He said, they out there asking questions about you, man. I said, what you mean? They asking about who you is and why you doing this and that for the horse. All right. And what you tell them? Man, you don't want to mess with Boone. Boone carries. Knives, gun, whatever. If you mess with him, you better be ready to kill him or die. So the word get around and people start leaving me alone. They went, I ain't fucking with that boy. That boy crazy. So, of course, I never heard anything back back about that guy doing anything. But word gets around. My mama talking about, why is that discreet talking about boom is out there doing things to people? What boom? I'm like, you. Not me. Oh, jump too fast. I forgot to tell you how I found my mom in there. Yeah. But back at the hookers, they was giving me money, buying me clothes. So one day I'm sitting on the porch and I met this girl. And she's cute. She wasn't no whore or nothing. She had a nice little house and I rapped to her. She let me stay with her for a little bit. We became boyfriend and girlfriend, and I wind up uh, getting her pregnant. So after I got her pregnant, the girls knew where to find me if they needed me. So the girls come down the street, impeller, where, you know, like the back window raised down. Yeah. So they come down there with an impeller with a big bow on it. I'm like, what the hell are you driving around with a bow on it? So they pulled up in front, smiling and laughing, boom, come here. I said, what? You see, I'm with my girlfriend. We sorry. We just want to give him his gift. The car? They said, yeah. That brought me up. Oh, man. Oh, Cindy, come on. You crying to hell? No, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they believe y'all bought me a car with y'all money. Because y'all do got minds, right? They said, yeah. You begin to start being mean. I said, ooh, I'm sorry. Take the car. I never seen them again after that that they gave me the car because the girl I was going with, she, I didn't know that she knew my sister. Mm. They lived right next door to us. My, my, my mother, brother, sister, everybody lived there, and I never knew it. And I've been staying with her for almost like three months. So, you know, she tell me that she's going to the party next door. You want to come? I said, I really don't like being out. She said, oh, come on, baby. Don't you love me? Like, don't wear that out. But yeah, I go with you. So I go over there. And the girl opened the door. Damn, she looked for me. I don't say nothing. And I sitting there. I got my hair done, my nails done. I'm sharper than them. Mm. So I go in there and sit down. And uh, later I found out that her name was Etna. Etna. 
I got a sister named that. And here come my sister Louise down the stairs. Now, I knew her when I said, whoa, wait a minute, that's Louise. <gasps> so I started trying to duck down Louise, talking about, boom, what the hell? Did you run away again? I said, no, I've been out for a year or so. She said, nobody told us. Y'all didn't leave no new number or nothing. They gave me the old address over on Continental. I didn't know that y'all live here on Sheridan because I've been living next door to you. So, nah, that's Michelle's place next door. I said, yeah. I've been living with her. <laughs> but she prayed. I said, yeah. You for the auntie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she told me where my mama was working at the White Castle up there. Top Hat, they call it back then, I think. It was Top Hat. I go up there on the boulevard in Jefferson. My mama in there working. I said, okay. I see her through the windows. Oh, my mama working too hard. So I go in there and I sit up at the counter. And she walked past me twice. Third time she said, what you want to eat, boom? I'm like, you know who I am? Said, like I don't know my own kid. I'm like, I got press your hair and so forth now. He said, I still know who you is, boy. What you want to eat? I'm not really hungry, but I take a shake. She made me a chocolate shake, my favorite. She asked me, do, do you know where we live? I said, yeah, right down there on Sheridan. So I go back to the house. She get all work. She talked to me, and I explained to her. The people kicked me out. But I'm going to go join the Army. She said, what? I'm going to go join the Army, me and uh, my friends. I mean, y'all finna join us. There's about six of us. So after my mother gave us the okay, we, uh, what did, what did happen? Okay. Oh, I never did tell them that I was in. Hmm. I just said, we think about joining the Army. So when we did, we went to boot camp and all that shit, ATI. But I never told nobody. So when I came home, I came home in just plain blue jean, blue jean jacket, and a hat. I didn't wear my uniform home. I had two weeks off. So we go back to the city and uh, we bullshitting at the... It's on Crane and Kirchable. They had a little bar right there. We go in there and we dancing. At that time, the Freaky Deek was out. Okay. Girls bagging up on them. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm dancing. All of a sudden, it pow. Nigga, did you just hit me? No, James don't already walk behind him. He didn't know what was coming down until after the guy hit me, but he walked behind him. And I looked at him and said, man, you got a lot of balls. Man, you don't be doing that to my woman. Your woman was doing it to me. I'm still leaning against the bar. She done walked up to me and bagged it up. Man, I'll cut you. I said, what? You gonna do what? i cut you. Well, see, you bring in a knife. I'm packing. Tell me, oh, so you gonna shoot somebody? Not unless you try to hurt, hurt me and harm me, then I'm protecting myself. He was like, I guess he thought he was fast. Yeah. So, shoot. I got a drop holster. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he put the knife back up. A couple of days later, they popped that boy shot in the alley. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm like, damn. <laughs> and they come and arrest me. Oh, what the hell? Hey, where you got? Right here. License to carry. I got general license. I'm still in the service. Hey there. Somebody sent you a message on the they telephone. Called, they called the service. And, of course, the master sergeant came over there to 1300 Bobin talked to him and so forth. They said, nah. He had a gun. He said, yeah, he likes to carry it. 
prosecutor said, well, we're going to make an example out of this little nigga. And I can hear them out there talking. I'm in the cell, but I can still hear them. My little nigga. So, okay, so they said, come to me tomorrow. We will then offer you a deal. Three to 15 for manslaughter and two for the gun if you take a cop. So I got license to carry this. Mm -mm. Where are you going for that? They don't know what to tell you. Service talked to him and said, hey, he's going to re up. Y'all going to take him? He said, well, we're going to keep him a little longer because we believe that we could get him to take a cop. I never did. I wound up going back into the service for another tour. They got pissed off. And later on, when I got out the service, they finally got me for, uh, well, they charged me with armed robbery, possession of a firearm during, during, during the commission of an armed robbery. Mm. It wasn't me. Even as today, they still got that crap in my record, but I wasn't about to tell that. That's my brother y'all picked out the picture of. Mm. So, Pop came down there with my mom and said, you ain't going to tell me with me, is you? I said, man, you left that shit in my car, man. So they assuming that, me. I didn't even know what they had until my lawyer said, yeah, they found the people ID in your, tr in your trunk. Only body had my car was Pop. It was in his name. So I kept my mouth shut, went on and served the time. Yeah, how long you used that for? I, I served two for the gun. You got to do that flat. Yeah. And one in the, almost two years for the crime. Then they put me out on parole. When I got out parole. Now, quick question. So when you was in the Army, was you special forces? Because I seen something was saying that. Yeah. Vietnam, everybody was sent home, but you was sent back in. On missions. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Can't. Can't. Uh, okay. They already yeah. having a fit. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Okay. All right. But I got pictures and so forth. I wish I'd have brought my army picture. I could have showed you. Yeah. <laughs> and paperwork. Oh, what you doing? Um, I always keep copies of everything because I don't trust y'all. I figure sooner or later y'all going to kill me. Mm. They're like, Why would you think us? You we would do that? I said, because you trained us to do certain things. And we were supposed to get a job, but we didn't get the job. Why? They was already full. No, nah, because we blacked. <clears throat> I, I wanted to tell them that's why we all turned hit, man. Because y'all didn't <laughs> want to give us the job. So we're going to make some money. Yeah. If you don't want to pay us what you want me to stop doing out here and pay me and I do it in there. So we're going to do it out here then. And we did. We made good money. So, so how did you, were you already getting into the hits prior to Best Friends? Like, Yeah. So kind of tell me, uh, so you had your own little crew. Before them. They came down there to the Tough Man contest, and that's how I met them. This is when you was fighting? Yes, when I was boxing at Cobra Hall. And uh, <clears throat> Butterbean was one of the ones I fought, but the fat boy didn't go down. <laughs> but he was out, and I told him, he's out. He just ain't failed. Keep fighting. I said, if I keep fighting him, he's going to die. Just keep fighting. I'm getting mad. So I stepped back, pulled up my glove. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> they said, keep fighting. <laughs> so I pulled the glove up, and the man must have knew what I was doing. And he shoved me across. Hey, what you You said, keep fighting. Why did you do that? I'm going to put the boy out of his misery. You won TKO. TKO my head. The boy is out standing up. That fat boy just didn't fall. <laughs> All the other people I fought, they fell. One of them quit. The guard that worked at the prison, he quit. Oh, shit. Because they had told me ahead of time, and they told him too, we got a man that used to be in the prison where you worked at at Jackson. And they told him the same. They told me and him both the same thing. Somebody sent you a so, message on your telephone. I wind up fighting him, and then I think it was the second round, he got out the ring, went back to the back. They go, what the hell? Well, I said, well, he quit. You won. <laughs> I said, okay. So I won, and uh, that's when they asked me, do you want to go to Texas and fight in the big money down there? 
I was like, I don't know. Give me time to think. That's when my nephew Brew was about Reggie, Boo, Eric. He brought them over there, the best friends. And uh, they wanted to meet me. So I was like, what's up? They said, man, you was whooping that butt. So what I supposed to do? Let them whoop me? <laughs> he said, man, would you work for us? I said, the money, right? I work for anybody who got money. That's what I love is money. He said, man, you can become a friend. I said, Friend, enemy, whatever. I, I go for the money. This was, is it rocking red? I liked the red. Red was cool, man. Got along. We used to go to my uh, house and cook up uh, shrimp, lobster. T- I mean, we cooked up everything. And me and him was used to eat. But then when he get a little drink in him and a little uh, popping over the uh, acid pills, he wanted to go ride. <laughs> I said, where are we going? Just ride around the west side, man. What are we doing over here, man? We, now, now, you know they don't like you over here. They don't know who I was. But kind of figure out that they thought I was his brother, Boo. Mm. So we both big and boy and look. I was like, why don't people keep saying, they go Boo and Reggie? I thought he was saying Boom, but he was saying Boo. What the hell? So we going down seven miles near Illinois, and, uh, we run into some people that was in this Jeep. Reggie rode down. He don't even tell me he finna blast his goddamn car up. He rode down the window. I looked over there. Like, what the hell? I take off. Go around the corner and come back. Park the car. I get out. Go over there and look. So when people talking about, ain't that boo of it? Turn around and look to see my down. Say, you talking about you? Hell no. I, I was say, man, I had to take off running. <laughs> Two shots were fired at me. I got back in my motherfucker. Excuse me. I got back in the Jeep. Took off. Went back to the east side. They didn't chase us, which I thought they was going to do. But nobody chased after. Red was like, man, why you even go back? Make sure they dead and that they didn't see nobody. Yeah, I want, he said, was there? I said, yeah. He was like, hey, hey, hey. I like, you crazy than me, man. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> so we go up there to Jefferson at the, no, we went on Grass Ship and McClellan to the uh, Corny Island joint. We was getting food in there. And Police pulled, well, I didn't know anything yet. Police pulled up there. They know Reggie. So they out there looking through the window at him. I'm like, why the police said they know who I am? What you mean? They know who we are. We best friends. And you're going to be known as that. I'm like, man, I don't want to be, no, I don't want to be seen. See, that's how y'all get too much notification going, and you're going to always get busted or caught up in some shit. You got to do shit low key. Then when you do it, okay, people could say, hey, we think they did it, but there's nobody to witness it. That's why I told them, everything we do, man, we got to do by ourselves. We don't need no witnesses. You want to take your friends and shit, and uh, those friends going to be your witness in your downfall later. He was like, what you mean? If they get caught doing something, they're going to give you up. No, oh, man. Uh-uh. They'll die for me. I said, yeah, okay, you keep thinking that. <laughs> See, I've been to prison. Yeah. You ain't. <laughs> <clears throat> so I started scanning. I said, well, you know if you get caught and go to prison, they're going to take that booty. <laughs> you talking what, man? I'm gonna... I said, there was men too that came through that. But later on, they had the shirt tied around their waist walking the yard. I'm telling all them guys that. Most of them listening. Man, I ain't going for that. I said, best thing to do, if you know you're finna get caught, shoot it out. You, I trust me, you'd rather die than get poked in the butt by a bunch <laughs> of motherfucking dudes all the rest of your bit. Man, I ain't going for that. I said, right. So if you get pulled over, what you gonna do? Man, I'm shooting it out. We're going to hold Cordy in the screen. I said, there you go. 
Shit, don't let the motherfucker take you and send you back to this slave camp. That's all that is, is a slave camp. You go back there, either they're going to make you do it to them, because a lot of them guards are faggots. Mm. I seen the guard bag his butt up to the M.A. cell. The M.A. was tearing his butt up <laughs> on the back catwalk. <laughs> we got our mirror looking. Look. Then I hear the guard up, ah, ah. Jerome, is you hitting that guard? <laughs> you down there talking about, hell yeah. <laughs> I said, damn, man, I didn't know you was hanging like that. He said, man, shit, I, you know I ain't never getting out. John was saying, hey, send him over here next. Oh, shit. <laughs> and the guard was slide right on over to John. I was like, and this guard... Ain't somebody going to bust him doing that? Said, Don't nobody walk back here on this back cat walk. They, they walk on the front walk. Yeah. Back here, and you go back there, and you be looking in the cell, checking to make sure ain't nobody making spud juice or doing anything illegal, even though we did everything illegal in there. Hell, I was selling drugs. I was selling knives. I was selling food. I had about four. No, I had three gambling tables. Mm. And, uh... In fact, that's when I ran into my cousin. <laughs> he was in there. I was like, he said, you know we cousin, right? I said, right. He said, yeah. I said, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, me a little jazz. So I, I hooked him up with anything you need, man. You need anything? I got a store here and a store there. I got you there everywhere. Also hit a 357 in there. In prison? Yeah. <laughs> you got a gun in prison. Yeah. The guard rounded it up. The female, uh, uh, Nadine. Mm. Nadine rounded it in. And she said, you get caught with this. I don't know you. I said, baby, you know I love you. I ain't going to get caught with it. But if shit really jump off where I can't get out of it, I'm going to use this. Well, I, you know, wrap it up, bury it in the back, uh, behind the barracks. I ain't never had to use it but that one time. That's when old who was talking about going to the gym to jump on my cousin. They didn't know that we was real blood cousins. Yeah. And that's because my cousin robbing them. <laughs> 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 he was taking that shit and he got, man, this nigga was robbing. So what? That's my cousin, man. I can't let you do anything. Now, man, you know me and I know you. We ain't gonna go through this, is we? Man, we gonna kill him. Pour the gun out. Okay, then let's kill each other. Man, I you get a gun. Shh, don't say nothing. Let's go. You got your horse up your sleeve. You touch my cousin, I'm gonna blow the top of your head off. And you supposed to be going home in a couple weeks. You won't be going. We heard the door shut, oh, put my shit back up, and I thought he was going to tell the guard when he, but he kept his mouth, so he just, so what you want to do, tell? Before those guards take me, I'm going to shoot you. I ain't got nothing to lose. If they catch this on me, I'm through. But you're going to be through, too, and you won't be here to watch me serve this time. He left it alone. My cousin found out about what was going on, and when uh told me about, yeah, those motherfuckers just mad because I was taking their shit. I said, only the strong survive. If they weak enough and you can take it, take it. Hell, I was taking a lot of people's shit. That's why I said when I first went in there, they were trying to kill me in the shower. They came in there, three of them. They got knives and shit. They clothed. I'm not. Got no weapon. But the shower thing, like this. So I seen them, they were like, yeah, we're going to kill your ass, big boy. Boom, broke that pipe. Let's go. I ran towards him, hit that first one up in his armpit with, boom, pulled it out, kicked him to the side. The other ones were trying to run up on me. I went to roll back to hit him. The third one ran down the uh, fucking gallery. That's when I ran after him. Because the uh, second one, I caught him across the jaw. But the third one ran down the gallery, and that's when they, uh, they fired the shot. Boom, down. Of course, I got down. I'm butt naked. I figured they can't do nothing. I'm butt naked. They, 
they got clothes on. So I'm laying down there on the thing, and uh, guard come down there and handcuffed her. I'm like, what's going on? I said, they tried to rape me. They got weapons. They locked me up, and uh, next thing I know, they came back and let me out. Many of the inmates said, yeah, they were trying to kill him. They didn't say anything about raping me, but I told them they were. I mean, why wasn't he in the shower? And I'm naked, and they dressed and got knives. So that's my excuse to get yeah. out of that. And I did. I got the hell out of there. And they didn't charge me, but they sent me to Muskegon. Mm. Yeah, they sent me to Muskegon. That's when I met Pookie Duke and all of them. Wait, well, well, no. We got ki- well, okay, we got kicked out of Jackson. They sent us to Muskegon in, in the middle of the night. Nobody wanted us, so they load the bus up with all the people they hate or that they couldn't control because that was right after the riot, too, in Jackson. Okay. They loaded us up and sent us up there. And when we got there, they put us all in a uh, birch unit. When we got in birch unit, uh, we sort of, like, took over that place quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I became the head of JCC and uh, selling popcorn and Anything else I could get my hands on. Go to the kitchen, tell them, hey, man, boil me about a hundred of them hot dogs. Don't put nothing on the bread. Just wrap them up. I got mustard and ketchup packets and radish. I was out there on the yard selling hot dogs and sandwiches, cook-ups. They were like, man, you got everything. I said, yep, you ain't got to go nowhere. Homeboy mad at you because you putting this dough out of bed. I said, that's their problem. Their price too high. My store, you're only paying 10 cents more. <laughs> you can't beat that deal. But see, by me selling my stuff quickly, I'm getting more. Yeah. So I'm making money. I got people going to the store getting me more. I don't run out. Because I can sell mine as quick and get back. And the other stores, I'm like, hey, man, you going to make us fuck you up. Let's go. I don't know why y'all like to talk about it. Just do it. <laughs> Come on, man. What the hell? I said, remember when that guard got stabbed in Jackson and they threw the man in the laundry cart and shipped him up north? That was me. No, man, that was Iceman. Duh. <laughs> so that was your nickname in prison? Yeah. Iceman. <laughs> That's crazy. Computer time, you was cold in the mud, man. <laughs> I said, hey, that guard come up to the unit and he poked me in my chest. I'm going to lock up. I got a 24-hour detail. You don't lock me in my cell. I'm a carpenter. I go around fixing this crap. Plus, I got to sell my shit when you lock everybody in. <laughs> I, got, I got them zoom, 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 wham, wham. I got, that, I got that hair on. I got that boy, girl. I got the weed. I got liquor, whatever you need. I demand what you need. What you need, I got it. If I ain't got it, I damn sure try to get it. You need a visit, a girl to come up here so you can get off? I got them, too. You need your people to be browned up? I can get them browned up. I was doing everything. People were like, what? Can you get my girl browned up here? Oh, yeah. How much you going to cost? I said, uh, 75 tokens. He was like, okay. Because 75 tokens ain't shit in there. Yeah. I was buying, uh, cash money when people got cash in you bring me a hundred I give you two hundred in tokens <clears throat> cause I gotta get cash I can't keep <clears throat> walking around the yard with all this token scrap to me and yeah. hidden everywhere people holding it so I, I bought cash rolled up real fine and sold it in my coat <laughs> they come to my cell tearing apart trying to find my money we know he got it they didn't know that that's why everybody that was down with me they wore their coats inside out. Mm. So people knew when you down with the crab and some had the hat on saying, down with the crab. <laughs> the guard come at me and said, well, why they walk around here with your name on their hat? I don't know. Yeah. When they get them, I don't know. So of course, uh, when I got out, I had to ask the guard. I said, I'm free, right? Said, yeah. He said, damn, somebody got a red limousine out there. I said, yeah, that's mine. Huh? 
Boy got out of it, brought me a bag of clothes. He knew my size. Went in the bathroom, took prison clothes off, put my clothes on, stepped back out. I said, I'm free, right? He said, yeah. I ripped the institutional coat. He said, what the, why are you tearing the coat up? I turned it around. He was like, that's money. I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to tear my cell up looking for it. I sold it in my clothes, you check it. <laughs> I'm like, how much is that? I said, 72000 Damn. <laughs> I said, how much money I made being in this goddamn bag? I gave it to the girl, and she took it on that down to the car, and they were like, man, you made money. I mean, I used to have my cousin come up and get money because I had too much money. I used to have her come up and just give him here. And she, that was Roger's sister. I used to have her come up, and I just give him here. Uh, take this. I ain't got no need for it. So you just, I said, I ain't got too much of it. Can't sew it, can't sew no more in there. <laughs> I know they're gonna let me take two coats out. <laughs> yeah. Every time I got money, I'll call them. I got another load if you want it. <laughs> and they come up there, like, here you go. So with, with the best friends, you you end up leaking with them, but then you end up becoming um security for Maserati Red. No. Okay. I hooked up with, yeah, I hooked up with the best friend, but <clears throat> mine's the writer Rick. I started working for him first. Oh, okay. When they found out that I was working with him, they said, hey, man, why you didn't come? I said, because it's about money, man. I told y'all that. So take me to the story of how you meet, met Maserati Rick. At the, at the beeper shop. Okay. Where they had the beepers, the phones, and all that, you know, you had to go to the beeper shop. It was out on a 13-mile... Softfield? Yeah, I think about 13 miles Softfield. They had a beeper shop where we were buying our beeper and we get the burner beeper so we ain't never got to pay the bill. Burner's phone, we ain't <laughs> never got to pay that either. Shit. <laughs> My other Roddy Rick showed us how to do that when I met him that day. But before I met him, I didn't know who in the hell he was. But his boy walked into the back of my boy. Mm. And my boy, hey, man, watch where you going. He said, man, you better shut your mouth. My boy said, what? So I'm sitting there looking. See my boy's hand drop to his side, so I know what time it's been to be. So I get up, and I steps over there in between them. I said, hey, this man, we ain't got time for this. Man, y'all better get out of there. I said, and if we don't, now I'm let my gun slide down into my hand for my uh, sleeve. Maserati Rick seen that. I don't give a fuck they see it. You motherfuckers ain't finna live. So he came up, hey, man, this ain't necessary, man. He said, who are you? I said, who are you? He said, I'm, I'm known everywhere, man. I'm Maserati Rick, baby. You know, he said, can I holler at you? I said, you can talk to me, but don't you holler. He was like, no, man, I just want to talk to you outside. I looked at my boy and said, don't worry, man. We got these fools in here. I said, okay. So I stepped outside with Rick. We go to his bin, the little gold bin he had. He went to me, hop in. Big as I am, you think I'm going to fit in that little bitty ass car you got? He was like, oh, man. I said, yeah, let me show you. I tried to get Didn't fit. I don't fit in little cars, man. I mean, at that time, I'm all cut up and everything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I don't fit in these little cars. Why you think I drive that goddamn uh, S10 over there? It fits me. I could duck my head and get in. He was like, man, uh, I seen what you had. I said, so? He said, man, who are you? I said, uh, I ain't about to tell him my real name. I said, boom. Look, you one of the best friends? No. Ain't you and Reggie brothers? They call you Boo? I said, no, that's his brother, Boo. I'm Boom. Mm. Felt different. Here's three words. Mine's five. You was like, hey, man, would you go to, I forgot the name of the club off of Jefferson near the little, after our, well, not after our joint, the little club that was underneath the little bridge. He said, man, would you go with me to the 
club man, I pay you to go with me. You be my bodyguard. That's how much. So I got two fifty of them. You, you a good joke, ain't you? He said, "How much you want?" I said, "Give me a thousand. A thousand just to be." I said, "Yeah, because you, you on my time. I got to be on your time." And you never know if I got to hurt, hurt somebody. If I do, I ain't got time to collect later. I need money up front. I give you 500 now, 500 at the end of the night. I said, okay, you gave me 500 so I met him up down there, parked my car up on the hill. Best friend parked theirs up on the hill, too, and what's his name? Uh, Big Ed, Ed Hanson. He parked his on the side of the street facing towards Jefferson. Now, at that time, Maserati had just got his new beans up. So I'm in there talking to Boo and them. They were like, man, you need to come with us. I said, man, I told you, man, whoever got the money, baby, told you that at Cobo Hall that day. Money talks. I ain't doing shit because we're friends. No, I don't do that. I, I work for money. So we were talking, then Ed came in. When Ed came in, Boo was standing next to me, and Red was standing on the other side. He said, oh, man, there's going to be some shit, Boom. Might as well write got himself in some shit cause that's, because that's Big Ed there. I'm like, yeah? He was like, man, those two don't like each other. Now, at this time, he was telling me it was over some broads. Yeah. So I said, what they got to do with me? He said, man, might be a shootout. I said, yeah, okay. I don't <laughs> miss. So Boo went around that way. Reg went around that way. And I went straight up the middle. Rick had, uh, was standing there by the front entrance. So Ed seen him and Ed stepped up to him. And they said something. I don't know what they said. But when Rick noticed me, Boo, and Red around him. Ed haven't noticed nothing yet. So Rick started getting tough. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he was getting tough because he know we was there. And we was all big, big guys. Yeah. So uh, he said something tough, and then the man came over there on the play. He said, oh, no, nah, come on, fellas. I don't, I don't want no shooting in here. I looked at him and turned my head back, kept watching Ed. Ed looking over, Miles Roddy Rick. So they seen me. He looked to that way, seen Boo. He looked the other way, seen Red. He was like, oh, man. So he started bagging up towards the door. So I'm going towards that way. This boo ain't going to get to that door and then just start blasting back up in there at us. So we get to the door. He done took off running across the street. He jumps in his uh, 5.0. My Rider Rick jumps into his bin. I jumps into it with him. That was his newer bin was bigger. I jumps into it with him. We flying down Jefferson. All of a sudden, I see Boo, Ridge, and their trucks where, and their Volvo. They flying down, and we just flying. Phil Priestley used to be right there on Jefferson and St. Jean. Man, phew, phew, phew. <laughs> we just flying. <laughs> But when he got to Algonquin, that's when he turned off. And I could see him, and I told Rich, he, he turned that Algonquin, turn, turn. He was going to turn that Connors. I said, no, he had him. So he went down Connors. We shot down the other side, came back up. We don't see that five point nowhere. So we driving out East Street looking. Back and forth. Reggie and Boo riding down the other street looking. We meet up on Jefferson. Anybody seen it? No, man. He either got off or he went across. I'm like, man. Of course, it's later on we found out that he pulled behind the house and pulled that way on the side so we couldn't see the car. Mm. I was like, oh man, that's kind of slick, man. I, I wouldn't have never thought that shit. <laughs> but now we start doing that shit too. Yeah. But I said, oh man, that was slick of him. Word got back out that uh, he wanted to do Maserati Rick badly now. So uh, Rick said, hey, man, we got to kill him. I said, ain't no problem. You got the money to pay me? He said, I'm going to help you. 
I don't need no help. <laughs> what you think? You going to hold them down and I do something to them? Or I hold them down and you do something to them? Nah, man, I'm going to hit them from a distance, baby. Now, if you want a body part, you just tell me what part you want. No, man, I want to do it with you, man. I said, man, you ain't, you ain't cut like this. Yeah, I am, man. I was in the Army. I said, yeah, right. Uh, army. I don't want to hear that <laughs> shit, man. Oh, man, come on. I throw, I throw you some extra. I said, okay. So I said, okay, and we leave. We park the van on the side. We wait till it got dark. We crawling in the bushes, crawling up on the side of his house off, over, off sunset. We, we land in the grass. All of a sudden, some guys pulled up. I'm like, man, I hope they don't see us landing. Don't move, Rick. When we land flat, they won't see it. So they walk past, go up to the porch, knock on the door. Ed come to the door. He looks out. I said, that nigga paranoid. That man was doing his own shit back then. Yeah. And uh, he came out. They all sat on the porch. When I say three, you run that way, I'm going to cut them off this way. One, two, three. I jumped up. The fool ran across my path. I told him, you run that way. Don't run across where I'm shooting at. First set was shot toward the doorway and he jumped off the thing and ran through the lane, ran out his hat. So I picked his hat up and I was wearing around. People were like, man, somebody shot up here. Yeah, yeah. How you like his hat? I'm like, what? I yeah, tell him anytime he wanted, he can come and collect. I'm like, man, y'all starting the war. There about no war. Tell me he won his hat. We got it. Next thing I know, Boo came to me, said, man, did this, man. We need you, man. We hear weird shit about somebody out there, big guy that's dressed up in the hoodie and all that. I said, oh, you do? Who? Said, that's you, ain't it? Can you prove it? You got a witness? He's on. No, man, but we know. I said, you can say what you know, but I ain't going to never affect. That's like me giving you power over me. Did I told you that I did this or did that? No. That's why I be telling y'all. Y'all be doing shit with your friends. You got a witness against you now. I don't need y'all as witness against me, so I ain't going to tell you one way or another if that was me or not. But how you like his hat? <laughs> That's his hat. You pulled it off. Yeah. Yeah. Let me wear it for a while. <laughs> so all the friends was wearing this hat. Ed was pissed off. So one day we ran down the street, but we parked on the other corner of where he was at. Because he, he didn't go back to sunset, uh, sunset or whatever. He didn't go back there. He went to this other house. Of course, people tell us where the people went. So we sit down in the corner. We just watch him. So, okay, now if he come out and get in this car, we're going to waste his ass when we get to that corner. I said, no, if he come out, I can hit him right here. You see that scope on there? I don't miss. So all of a sudden, the door flew open. He ran, running out, <laughs> blasting at this white van. Yeah, you bitch-ass motherfucking Rick. And that's when the man jumped out the and he seen the man was white. <laughs> you uh -huh. shooting up a white man van. He runs back to the house. I said, oh, man, the police going to be over and beating his ass. Evidently, the other people in the neighborhood was telling me, man, just leave the situation alone. We can get you some money to have your shit fixed or buy you a new one. Man must have left it alone because I ain't never heard about the police going there to him or anything. So he tried to get back at us. So he come flying down the street over on Wishire. Promenade. We sitting on the porch. I just happened to pull up and I sit on the porch with him. And all of a sudden, we seen that 5.0 car. Ain't like, hey, that it? Yeah, I guess the punk went to shoot it out with him. 
He pulled down. We all sitting on the floor watching. We all got ready, but of course, we see the police down on the other end. <laughs> so we watching them. We watching the police. He pulls up. All suddenly, his window dropped. That boy got a lot of balls. But he hangs out on the other side and shoot up the house across the street. La, 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 la. Police. He took off. Hit that corner. He, he was gone in that. That five point ogre pick up. Yeah. He hit that corner, hit that fire hydrant. Police hit it and beat. They beat the shit out of that boy. <coughs> his, I mean, his own mama wouldn't have recognized him. Damn. I mean, his face, because we went to his court hearing the next day. When we got in there and seen his face all swollen, I was like, damn, they beat the shit out of that man. But uh, he made bomb because like, nobody was shot. Nobody lived there. Yeah. The house was vacant. And then he was out there saying, well, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Police said that they was watching us. Like, we ain't did shit. They said, why y'all down here anyway? We want to see, was y'all going to beat him up some more? <laughs> <laughs> y'all beat the damn of that boy. Look at his face. Boom. I see, mm, mm, mm. So they get him bond. His girlfriend paid it. She went out to go get the car. She pulled up in front of the place. We standing out there like this. He comes to the door. He see us. He, so he start backpelling back in. He told the uh, depth, the tall, light-skinned brother. Brother come to the door. He told the other depth to tell, uh, tell them to leave. We ain't got to leave. We on the sidewalk. We not on y'all property. And we just sitting out here. He said, well, y'all know who's in there. And he ain't going to come out. Said, oh, so y'all going to let him stay in there. Y'all a bunch of pussy. Put him out. All of a sudden, we didn't notice that his car backed up all the way down to where the <laughs> judges and them come in, go in, and leave. Yeah. All of a sudden, the door flew open. He looked. It boom, dived in the car. She did a U-turn, jumped on the 75, and they was gone. I was like, we had to go back over to the party. Like, we ain't going to catch them, so let's just say that we'll, we'll catch them another day. So after he got away from us then, Rick was like, man, I said, you messed up mine the first time. He would have been caught then. Lucky enough, you ain't dead. I just happened to see you out the corner of my eyes running towards me, so I stopped. The hell is you doing? Pop, pop, pop. Hey, get that, mom. Ooh. <laughs> He was able to jump that fence and get away, and then all his boys were like, man, we ain't seen nothing, man. Well, then y'all get the hell up and get the hell out of here. Can we say anything? We gonna know. We got the police in our pocket. Yeah. Talking about, man, we ain't seen shit. We ain't seen shit. They drive off. Word get back around. Ed at his uh, barber shop. And, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. That's a whole different person that's big I mean, uh, he said, Big Jane, he talked a bunch of shit, too. And we had to go after his ass. We got after a lot of people. Now, with, with that being said, so what happened the day that Maserati Rick ended up getting killed? Cause well, he should have never left the apartment because I was there with him. Hmm. But I was sleeping when he left. I didn't even know he left until Boo called me back on the phone and told me, Hey, man, what's this that uh, Rick got shot? I said, what you mean Rick got shot? Yeah, he got shot up at the car wash. Hey, Rick, they said you got shot at the car wash. I didn't hear nothing back. He said, Rick ain't there? I said, yes, he is. I, I go to his bedroom, look. The nigga not there. I go to the side of the window, look out the window, out of the loft. Like, his car gone. So I'm trying to dial his number, and it's nobody answering. I get in the car, still talking to Boo. He told me where they was at, and that day there too. So we get there, and we go to the fish shop right there on the corner. We grab some food and shit. Then we stood around trying to see if we catch anybody saying anything. We did. So we found out what hospital he went to. So we went to the hospital, and uh, when we get there, we told him, "You can't be here, man. It's the West Side. You gotta get back to the East." So had them transfer you there, man. 
So they got him transferred out of there. For some strange reason, people think he got killed at that hospital over there. No. Mm. Rick didn't get killed on the West Side Hospital. He got killed at the, ooh, I forgot the name of the fucking hospital receiving. Yeah, I think that was receiving. Because I was up in there when Boo came up. And he said, hey, man, what you doing? I said, Rick giving me uh, some money to, uh, to make sure nobody get in here after him. I guess he's still worried about Ed trying to get to him. He said, man, when Rick said don't do nothing to them, the word got on the street quick that we're a bunch of bitches. Mm. I said, what you mean? Because they was able to get to Rick. And when we supposed to be guarding him. Uh, he said, man, dear, dear, man, you need to leave. I said, Rick, pay me. He said, man, we'll pay you. I told my mother, he gave me double days. Him, man. So I left. Next thing I know, Rick got killed. Everybody talking about all this and I said, I don't know who did it. I I ain't going to try to guess, yeah. but, I, but I believe it was Boo. <laughs> well, why would Rick let him get it? Because I gave Rick the gun. He kept it on his pillow. That's why when he got killed, he still had the gun. If somebody come in, you blast the ass. Don't give a fuck who it is. Because I told him, Boo going to cross you out. Matter of fact, he already did that. He crossed him out with Columbia and Mike. Mm, Once plug. he found out his plug, yeah, he said, you don't need that no more. The Colombian wanted us to buy directly from them and come hang out with them over there. I was like, man, nah, price got to be right. He said, if that if y'all could get the money from people, the young boy incorporated, you keep that. So me and uh, Mark, we jumped in the van, we shot to the west side. Sure enough. There he is sitting at the bus stop. I don't know why fools be sitting at the bus stop. I guess because they figure they gonna uh, own this property or whatever. They can sit out there. Ain't nobody going to bother them. So I pull up. Nobody expecting us to be in that van. That van side door. Don't think he sees that barrel. Get in or die. Man, what the? Get in. We got in. We took him back to the Columbian. Now, we thought the Columbian wanted him dead. But instead, the Columbian just slaps him and talks and, there ain't no bullshit. He was like, man, this man has seen our face. No, no. I'm just going to pay y'all, but I'm just letting you know. I can reach out and touch you anytime I want. Black, Puerto Rican, Chinese, anybody I can send for you. So next time, you better have my money. He said, man, I got your money. He had the guy bring his car up there and he gave him the money. And of course, Boo took the money. We said, uh-uh, this is ours. <laughs> so he throws it in the van. Me and Mark said, hey, that's ours. We the one went and do get him. So we kept the money and uh, everything was straight. But I've been told, Mine's right Rick, that you're going to get crossed out because you introduced your plug to them. Mm. Once they got your plug, they don't need you no more. But couldn't they cop from the plug and sell and Maserati Ricky cop from the same plug and sell? Like, why would that be something they want to get them out the way? They greedy. Mm, and not you. to mention, because he didn't want us to go after the people that made best friend look weak. Got you. So, basically, the Columbia said, we don't care as long as his bill get paid. And that's what I think was the downfall when the Columbians said, I said, oh, they're going to kill that boy. And the Columbia ain't going to try to help him by going after whoever did it. Yeah. Because they got their money. Yeah. Because Reggie had to go over to Marjorie's girlfriend's house and get the safe. She was, you can't do that. Shut the fuck up. He went in there, put the dolly on the safe, and we drug it out, put it in the van. We didn't take none of this jewelry or anything else. Far as I know, she still had all that, and mm. she had the beans. Mm. So she lucky she got that because, hell, he got a wife. Yeah, he got kids by you and his wife, but 
We didn't care. We just wanted that safe. Did y'all go to the funeral? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's why you'll see me at the funeral, which they keep playing. Mm. That's me in a gray suit with the hoodie on the back hanging out a suit. Got you. A lot of people talking about, where you at? That's me right there. Oh, man, that is you. I said, yeah, but see, I knew that the DEA and everybody was there taking pictures, so that's why I put on the hoodie. Mm. Plus, I had to hit, show to hit the guy and let him know, you died this week. Damn. He looked like, well, I was already walking towards my car. Caught him on his front porch. It was an easy take. A lot of guys, they didn't know what to do. They just thought people was bullshitting until you like they realized, we serious. <laughs> <laughs> if we say you, you getting it, you getting it. Your best shot is to go on and get the hell on. Yeah. And Reggie, he would just, whoa. <sighs> Reggie would go on the shooting bins and just pop them pills, drink some, and then he'd go out there and just ride around looking for people to kill. Mm. He'd be like, come on, man, let's ride to the west side. I'm not going with you. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Was you scared? I said, you can call me a coward anything you want. I'm not going with you, man. I don't even think you know how the people you shooting at. <laughs> you just shooting up because you know there's the car or you might know them or they look like somebody. Man. You be fucked up. Mark was like that too a little bit, but he wasn't as worse as his cousin. Mm. Reggie was just out there. Now, Maserati Rick, they said it was he got buried in like a Mercedes Benz yeah. kind of Cassie, something yeah, like that. Wheels, everything. Yeah. Now you take take me to the night, best friends, because y'all y'all kind of start splitting up. Uh, your your nephew or somebody got killed by my little brother. Your little brother. See, oh. Boo was driving my car that day, and uh, when he gave it back to me, I should have looked in the ashtray, but I didn't. So I'm pulling up on Eight Mile in Buffalo. I got pulled over by the police. But when I got pulled over, police, they didn't give a damn about the law or your constitutional right. They pulled me out and went to search in the car. What the hell they searching for? That car clean. They opened the ashtray and I'm watching and also they pulled the bag out. So what the hell is this? I was like, what the hell is it? Did you put that in there? Oh, don't even try that shit. We got it out of your view. I said, uh, I know nothing about it. They, they tested. it. They had to scrape the bag just to get the residue. That's why they didn't give me that much time on it because it was mm. so low. And uh, I took a cop to it because they offered me even less time. So I took a cop to it, and then when I got in the joint, everybody was like, Man, what you doing back so soon? I said, I don't want to come back. Dumb, dumb, left a bag in my car, and they scraped it and come up with this. So now I got a year and a half to serve. I'm like, man, they going to mess around and get you killed or locked up forever. I said, yeah. The next thing I heard was my brother was shot and killed. What brother? They said, Andre. My little brother? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> Bruiser, 2020 boys, mm -hmm. I think y'all might know him too, but anyway, <clears throat> I go to the funeral and Bruiser tell me what happened. He said, who paid to have that done to Andre? Because Andre got some shit from him and Andre wasn't giving him money. He told Boo to see me because I was part of, I was like, See, I told Boo before I got locked up, don't get my little brother, don't get nobody that know me anything. Because they're going to try to use me as they ain't got to pay you. So he said that he wasn't going to do it. Evidently, he did. And my brother wasn't going to pay him. He should have got reached out to me and let me know, and I would have just went on and paid him and told him, don't give him nothing else, man. But he didn't. I guess he wanted to show that he'll put anybody down. Mm. But he hired somebody outside the thing to do, and they got caught 
accordingly. So when he did that, I was like, and Bruiser told me what happened. No, man, no, no. He said, yeah, why you think that uh, he ain't coming nowhere near you? Looked over there. Huh. He didn't come over here. And he know I'm home for my brother's funeral. And I didn't have no guards with me. The prison let me come home on my own. My sister picked me up, brought me to the funeral room. Then when time to go back, my sister took me back. I knew I was getting out in a couple more months. So I'm talking to my boys in the joint. They were like, man, that's cold. We wish we could go out there with you and butcher his ass. I said, yeah, we could have did it the way that we do niggas in here. He said, man, did it, man. Why don't you set that nigga up? I said, what? Set him up. Let him get caught up in some shit. Then when he come through here, everybody got to come through Jackson. Yeah. Get that number. He said, man, we can butcher that bitch. All right. Wait a minute. Y'all do that for me? He said, man, you know we love you, boom. No gayness, but we love you, dude. Every time you came through here, you put us down on more money, more ways to do things. I said, well, yeah, because y'all been cool with me all this time since we known each other, you know? Shit, when I leave, I leave all my stuff to y'all. Y'all just keep running it in case I ever come back again. <laughs> but most of the time, if I don't, I'm going to still have people bringing this shit up, throwing it out at Peak Farm, and Peak Farm get it in here through the milk containers or through whatever way that y'all decided to set it up. So uh, they said, man, don't forget, man. As soon as you get out, set his ass up. I said, yeah, okay. But y'all make sure y'all butcher him good. He said, man, the boy got a contract on him. We gonna collect that too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I forgot. <laughs> he said, yeah, man, we gonna collect that. So uh, you uh, sent him through here. But when I got out, Mark got killed. So I went to the funeral, went to the house for the after hour thing. Boo showed up. I figured I could do boo right here, you know. But that motherfucker didn't, didn't leave his three friends' side. I'm like, man, I'd have to kill all four of them. So I'm sitting there just laughing and grinning. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, boo, what's up, baby? Uh, Little Ridge came. I think it was Little Ridge or Luck. No, it was Chuck. Chuck came to me. Charlie Wilk. That sport name, real name. He came to me and said, hey, man, uh, we want to know, do you want to do a hit? I said, the price is right. He said, yeah, but he want all of us to do it together. He don't want the guys to escape because this is for his brother Reggie. We're going to get him back out. If we kill the witness... They ain't got nobody to, to be a witness because we killed him. That's why we told the lawyer, don't ask him any questions. Because if he died between now and time for him to come to court, they can't use what the prosecutor had already requested the man. He had to toss all that shit out. Yeah. All right. Ain't no problem. So evidently, they gave Reg my phone number. Reg called me at the house, and I was like, hey, what's up, baby boy? You, you still not on Blue Hole Card, is you? He said, no, they sent me to uh, Huron Valley. I said, man, don't, don't ever lock up. You're going to be known as a bitch because you went to Blue Hole Card. Man, don't never try to kill me. I said, you have to fight back, Holmes. You don't run, be a coward. That's why when I seen you over there that day, you went to wave and holler. No, nah, man, don't do that. Uh-uh, Red. Bring your ass out. Man, they're going to kill Bring your ass out. I got your back, and so do all my men. You see, anybody with these coats turned inside out, these are my people. See the hat down with the crap? These are my people. They're going to make sure nobody kill you. I never found out what happened after that because I got transferred to, to, to the reformatory. Okay. Because white boy Rick went through that. 
So I figured, okay, I could catch him at the reformatory and kill him. But by the time I got in there, Rick must have knew I was there because they locked the place down. Helicopter came in, flew his ass out. <laughs> oh, shit. I was like, man, what the hell is the helicopter doing here? He told me, they're taking off the white boy. But he stayed. He ain't better. Feds came in and got him, so he must have called them and said, oh, blah, blah, he gonna, that he going to give up the police and all, which he did. He <laughs> gave <Yeah>. heart and ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I seen that on the news yeah. when they had them handcuffs. He trying to duck down, and they, they, they trying to hold him up so, so the news paper get a good picture of him. I said, they still mess with the boy. They said they knew that boy was doing something. He was doing something when I was out there because he came to us and tried to buy a half a bird. And uh, which guy said, hey, man, white boy, wait, at the door, man, he trying to buy half a bird. So the white boy said, yeah. He worked for the Curry Brothers. What you come to us for? So I sat there and thought, I said, hey, man, I think he's telling. He said, hell yeah, he got to be, man. Why would he come to us instead of going to the Curry Brothers? If they find out he came to us, they should know he's telling. Yeah. Don't know if they ever found out or not, didn't care. But at that point in time, we was, we were chasing everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Because there was a hit put out on White Boy Ray, right? Yeah. It, was that coming from Eternal from the police or? That came from, well, Gil was the one that was bringing me to 125,000. Mm. That's why he said they're going to bring them out through this way. Yeah. That's why they let me get on top of the building. And I said, okay, I can take him out as soon as he, as soon as he pop his head out. They never came out through that way. They went under the tunnel. Oh, so got you. And when, and when he sent the cop up there to tell me, I'm like, what the hell going on? He said, man, they took him under the tunnel. Why y'all didn't make him take him out of car? They took him out under the tunnel, something going on, somebody doing some talking somewhere. I'm like, man, I, I hooked my red weapon, put it back in my case, and left the building. I go downstairs, throw it in the car, I go back outside the courthouse. I'm looking. Okay, they postpone this shit until the next day. But they're going to take them underneath. Okay, so we're going to do this then. Hey, bring everybody down here. We're going to protest. <laughs> free Rick, free Rick. <laughs> That's why they thought we worked it for Rick. Mm. The judge was like, no, nah, he couldn't be in charge of all those black guys. And then when they brought Rick in, we all stood up. <laughs> When he sat down, we sat down. And the judge was watching all the time. What the hell? You know, do you know those guys? I don't know them. <laughs> oh, it's like, okay, yeah, we don't know him, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> they put us out. <laughs> we go out. Now, we got Benz, Maserati. We got all every type of expensive cars out there. We got bolos of jewelry on. We got the mink coats and shit. The sterling. We, I mean, we dressed up. And we already had the signs. We had some girls make up some signs. And we took it in and said, free Rick, free Rick. If you don't free Rick, we're going to tell out Detroit. And the police came out. Hey, the judge is not buying that shit. They don't give a fuck. They ain't going to let them go. If they let him go, he won't live long. So the judge put it out that he ain't scared of nobody and he going to do his job. Life without parole. I'm like, oh, God damn. damn. <laughs> we got to go in there and get him. I said, ain't no problem. So, of course, Gil said, well, what's up? Because Young don't, well, Young never said anything to me or period, anybody. But Somebody got back and said, uh, somebody don't want him, uh, they said, get now. Y'all should be able to take, him, take something out in there. We could get y'all into the prison system. And then once y'all do the job, we get you back out on appeal and dismiss the case. Mm, damn. So we goes in. Reg was all, Reggie was already at the Huron Valley, so we so when Rick got there, he seen Reg and he went and told the guard, lock me up, he gonna kill me. 
So they locked him up, transferred him to, to Michigan Reformatory. I was there. Well, I didn't get there until two days after he got there or three. But he had paid everybody in that block to, I forget what block. It was J block. And we was in I block. But anyway, I goes over there. Everybody know me. So I goes over there and I'm babbing on the door. Why this door locked? They got a barricade on the inside. They just bothered me. Hey, man, somebody open this damn door. We came, man. Rick paying us to keep y'all out. Damn. He must be spraying some good money around. Man, we got money on our account. We can't open this door. We know you nice, man, but we can't open this door. I'm like, lockdown. Like, what the hell? So we go lockdown. Go lockdown, we hear, we hear a helicopter. They drop in the yard. Then we see somebody coming out with a blanket thrown over them. Everybody went to holler. That's that white boy. They flying him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves. I called back and told them what happened. They got me back to court, dismissed the case. I get out. I said, okay, got to do this a different way. Because now the feds got him. Yeah. And uh, I'm, somebody had a girl that worked in the DA office. And she told us where, where he was at. She was also telling us where they parked their cars. Because mm. the other guy wanted me to hit a DEA agent. He was a Sicilian. He wanted me to hit a DEA agent. That, that's one of the cases, too, I had to testify against. But uh, I set it up. We know he was out in Phoenix, Arizona, Mesa unit. And I said, well, we had to blow up the place. So we're going to need two rocket launchers. God damn. And we figured that we'd get all the witness, so we might be able to collect even more money by us tearing up that building. But this shit, I got caught up in this shit, so when they got me, I told them about it. They said, well, we're going to give you immunity if you tell us everything. I said, okay. So I told him every crime I ever did. Mm. I went back. <laughs> I'm, <nine years laughs> old. I'm telling y'all everything. I got immunity across the board. Said, yeah. That's when uh, the judge was like, he said, can't y'all find somebody else to make a deal with? He said, this is the only one that we ever got out of that group that's willing to testify. I said, yeah, I'll testify. Thinking in my head, they're going to send Boo in there and <laughs> yeah. put you his ass. <laughs> They're going to send the other three, too, because I told them there might be three more coming through here, too. I went out of budget. But before that time came, they flipped. Mm. But see, I was only giving up those six people. I wasn't giving up nobody. I could have gave up half of Michigan. I could have gave up other states, other countries and shit, yeah. but I didn't. I said, I just want these people that was, was responsible for killing my little brother. I want them. Even, even though I know I'm going to prison, I'm going to try to get them myself. You wouldn't never worry about the term snitch or rat being put on your name? No. They can say what they want to say, but uh, they won't say it to my face. Only one person tried to say it to my face when I came home. He was at a gas station. He told me, oh, yeah, man. I recognize, yeah, man, that's that snitch. Who you talking to? Yeah, you a snitch. So I started walking towards him. Nicely into my hand. Get a little bit closer, I'm gonna cut this fool's head off. My knife sharped in the mud. I get part way there, and the guy that was with him stepped up and grabbed the guy and started talking to him in his ear. He said, Man, I don't give a damn way. He's a snitch. He said something else. That's when the guy looked down. Man, what you going? I'm finna kill you. I said, I shouldn't have said that because the boy, they jumped in the car and took off. I'm like, man, I shouldn't have said that. I should have just kept walking. Yeah. But then I didn't want to kill his friend. His friend had nothing to do with it. He, he the one thought he had balls enough to do it. So I, I, that left me, my sons, and then we all jumped back into the uh, van. I love vans. We jumped back into the van and went back to the house. They were like, was well, you going to really kill him? I said, hell yeah. 
There ain't wouldn't have been no witness. No, that's real. I'm talking about, yeah, man, because I hit my shit, man. I was going to kill anybody. I said, <laughs> you done did that for me. Yeah, Unc, you know, we, I said, okay. I appreciate that. At least I know who, who, who got my back. Yeah. So, uh, we went back to the house. Next morning, I go down there to the smoke shop. Once again, they don't know who I was, but I'm in the smoke shop buying a cigarette. And the guy just came up to the counter and just nudged me away. Now, I know I got the gray hair and the beard and shit. I'm like, hey, little brother, what you doing? Man, get out of my way with your old butt. I like, boy, don't make me make you part of this wall. I like to see that. Mm. Your wish is my command. So I reached out and grabbed him in his shirt, pulled him towards me, threw my hand down. The man that owned the shop ran around. Come on, boom, please, man. Don't do it, us, please, don't. And the man started telling him, he said, man, why you messing with this man? You know who you messing with? I don't give a damn. He said, you better look down at that man's hand. Man, what you been? He said, look up there on the wall. Yeah, I know. Nate, boom. I know. He looked back at me. Oh, oh, Unc, man, I'm sorry, Unc. I said, I ain't your uncle. <laughs> he said, no, man, we call it, you know, who the folks that, man? You my Unc, man, I'm sorry, my Unc. I pay for your stuff. Then you had to pay for nothing. My stuff already paid for. I, I, I do want to end with this. Um, just take into that night. Um, that last night, the last hit that you were supposed to go on with the guys and you end up yourself yeah. getting shot. Shot up. Right. That Joe, I forgot the man's name again. Like I said, it's been so long. I got to, I had to look at my paper, but I think that was Joe Long we were trying to hit. And we already got the word that he had sold the gun and Chuck had hit the girl to get the gun and give it to him. Chuck got the gun. He said, yeah, man, I got the guy 357, man. So he ain't got no gun. I was like, wait a minute. His girlfriend sold? He said, yeah. But what they didn't know that he got another one. <laughs> so when he came out of that house from upstairs, come running out, he jumped into that cab. And uh, I lit the cigarette. Let him know that's him. They come riding down the street. Cab driver trying to take off. I told him, don't move. He seen that car pulled up on the side of him. And everybody jumping out. The guy in the back of the cab already died down. The other guys ran up on the other side of the car and this side and started blasting into the cab. The cab driver tried to take off. He wound up getting shot. Mm. Only thing he had to do was stay still. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have got shot because he putting all the bullets in the back into that boo back there. But they got him, but they also got the cab driver. I was like, man, messed up to kill somebody that didn't have nothing to do with the situation. He tried to take off with us. Yeah. Of course, I, of course, I said all that later. Yeah. But during that time, I turned around to go get the car. I felt something push me in the back. What? My hand back then came back. It's full of blood. I turned to look. Chuck and jumped on the car. Mike over there with a gun. Anybody got the guns pointing at me? I like it's about a bitch, a double cross. So I throw my hand back to get my gun. Boom! I don't go down. Chuck them fired off into me. Took all this up. I got a big hole, a big hole there. Went in there and then blew all this. Can, can off. we see your scars? The bone. But I know you see I'm not getting, but you can see the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> it did all this shit to me. Jeez. And they also did my arm. The AK went through here, ripped out that big bone. I lost a piece of bone. That's why my arm don't straighten up. That bone was missing. The dog ran off with what the ambulance and the police said. But uh, which car tried to shoot me in the face? 
went to 357. But I seen it coming, so I jerked up, caught it here. So when I got my gun out, they started to run and so forth. And I knew why they were running, because they know I don't miss. But what they didn't know, that second blast tore up this part of my arm. Mm-hmm. Couldn't pull the trigger. So if they would have stuck around, they would have seen that I couldn't do it. They could have ran up there and just wasted my big butt, but they didn't. They took off. They might jump in their cars, take it off. By the time I wake up in the hospital, what was it? Uh, city, po- well, Detroit police had me handcuffed. They was like, what happened? What were you doing? Why was you at that uh, place? I don't know what you're talking about. Of course, I tried to play. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, so you don't know? Man, I'm a drunk. I said, okay, that ain't going to work because they probably got my blood and they're going to test and see how I don't drink. I told them, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. So they left. When they left, I said, okay, I got to get these damn cuffs off me. I can't move. This song got poles coming all out of me with a cast over it. My leg is all up in the cast, stomach wrapped up. And I was like, man, I can't even move. So I told the nurse, hey, can you uh, give me my phone? He said, she said, sit right in the drawer. They didn't leave no cop there with me. They just left me handcuffed and took off. So I got the phone, called my sister and told her, can you come to the hospital? I'm in the hospital. She said, what's I said, I got shot up. Just hurry up and get here. When she got there, I told her, take all the clothes, everything. She said, you know you got money in it? Oh, boo, with blood. I said, take all that shit, take everything in there and burn it. I can wash this money. I said, take whatever and get the hell out of here. Because they're going to come back and they're going to be looking for that stuff that you've been removed. Take that out of here. So she washed the money, got rid of the clothes. When by the time the police realized those clothes ain't there no more, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I ain't finna turn uh, no turncoat for, for the Detroit police because shit happened was on my payroll. Mm. So I don't trust them. Shit, they'll set me up to be killed. Yeah. So I wind up calling the DEA and told them the deal. They was like, what you mean? You in the hospital? I said, yeah, I'm in the hospital. I got shot up. See, we told you you ain't supposed to have a gun. I said, it didn't work out that way. So they came, took over the whole situation. Detroit police, they mad. I just can't take a case from us, blah, 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 blah. We got up a murder and this and that. They already had their warrant from there. They said, U.S. attorney said, no, they taking the case. They got me for this, they got me for that, they even made us, we got me for this. So, you know, like they get me away from the Detroit police. I told them, if you leave me with them, I'll probably wind up dead hanging in my cell. Yeah. But they wanted booing them so bad, they were like, is you gonna give them to us? I said, yes, I'm gonna give y'all them, but you have to understand. I don't know nothing else but just them, those six. Okay, we still make the deal, but we want Terrence Boogaloo Brown. Ain't no problem. Can you give us anybody? I said, I'm going to give you just these six people. Basically, those are the six top head that's left. Of course, when they caught Chuck and everybody, they started flipping. Yeah. But of course, some of them, they did not go in the courtroom, but they told. They don't call that snitch because they had to go in the courtroom. But they were telling them people in New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York, Detroit, they was giving up people. That's why Chuck can't come back here. Mm. They they probably murk his ass. Me, I came back only because they forced me to, though, anyway. But like I told people, I'm not worried about nobody killing me. People I gave up deserved it. They killed me. They was behind my little brother, Death. Now, if you got a problem with that, okay, cool. Now, remember one thing now, I'm going to kill your family member. Don't you say nothing, even though you know it was me. Don't say nothing. I want to know, what would you do if somebody killed your loved one? Yeah. And you know that you're going to go to prison. Yep. Get them up, bring them in there with you. <laughs> and the war's still on, baby. 
just because we in there don't mean that everybody, no, I ain't your friend. When you get in here, you better get yourself a sword because I'm coming for you on day one. Man. Right? Several, several of them made it in there, but of course I wound up getting transferred out of there. The feds came in and took me out and put me in the Federal Witness Protection Program. I was like, why? I can do my time here in the state prison. But no, we already know how you living in there. <laughs> I said, what you talking about? We got pictures of you. How you get pictures of me in here? Oh, we, we got them. We got pictures of you living big time. You wearing three-piece suits in prison. Oh, shit. I said, because they, they let me get it in. There's no other way to get this in here. Of course, it was. You send the pants first. Wait a while. Send the vest. Wait a while. Just send the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I got it in. They were like, ain't that Mr. Crap? What the hell is he going? I'm going on a visit. And I got pictures of that. Be going on a visit with my <laughs> suit on. We're like, how the hell he get a three-piece suit in here? I got the paperwork to show that y'all signed it and let me get it in. I would get, I would have my mink coat in there, I had my jewelry, and everything. That's when they said that they got to take me out to state because you living too good. Yeah. You got money, you got the guards in your pocket. I said, then they have any guards in here, it's toot and coat. Those not, that is not toot and coat, they so much in debt that they can't get out of debt. Mm. So I paid their debt. Yeah, man. Well, 5000 where you get that money? I ain't seen nothing. I walk away. That money missing, so I know they took it. So they used it. They didn't go up there and tell the warden nobody. And plus, he was crooked too. Yeah. But they didn't go tell nobody. They kept that money, paid their bills. Later on, more guards started coming to me talking about they want to know if they could get a couple thousand from me. Okay, but I need this done for me. I need you to go to Detroit to pick up this car and take it up to it's I own you. Somebody gonna meet you at this restaurant. You give them the keys and they'll give you keys to a different car. You take that car back to Detroit and then you get in your vehicle or how or or how in the hell you got there and leave. That's all you're doing, just driving one car up here and leaving it, taking that car and taking it back. Simple money. That's about an hour, two hour, you know, work. You're getting two thousand dollars. Mm. They will pay your bills. Maybe have enough to go get some coochie at the work. <laughs> but that was happening. Then here come the cook lady. The lady that worked in the kitchen, the cook, stool. She was like, I hear that you are uh, hiring people. I'm like, what you mean? That, uh, that you like, you need drivers. It was at Count Waterloo? No. Oh. No, it was at the parole camp. So she was like, oh, she still probably figure out her name. But anyway, she was like, how much can I get for driving a car from one spot to another? Is the car dirty or anything? I said, no. I just want that car brought up here. And then you take the other car back because, because you know, like, you know like they're going to freak it out. Yeah. We sell and freaked out cars. <laughs> She didn't know she was driving. Yeah. Turn the dope all hidden out in that car. <laughs> but uh, she used to cook me special food that that the prison yeah. wasn't cooking. And she used to bring it to my table and everybody be like, we got ribs? What you mean? We got, you mean I got ribs? You went, you, I think y'all eating uh, meatloaf. Surprise meatloaf. <laughs> what I tell Me you? and my three boys, we were eating good. We got anything we need. And the guards was basically, like I said, they'll come and get some toot toot. And uh, the lieutenant, she was fucked up on it. She had got so far in my debt, I thought I had to have her give me blowjobs to try to make up some of that money. <laughs> so... We would go into the into the nurse station because the nurse and all that's gone, but she got keys to everything. Yeah, we go in there, she do her thing, but after a while, I got tired of it because 
that shit was tearing her butt up. I told her, no, nah, I want nothing. Nah. And plus, I'm getting ready to go home anyway. That's when all my boys come back down to parole camp getting ready to go yeah. too. So I got them all clothes to wear. I got pictures of that too. Uh, they're all wearing my clothes and shit. <laughs> we took pictures. Then when we got out, I stayed away for a little bit because I wound up taking some of the guys that was in prison that got out. I wound up hiring them in too on the street. I can't remember that tall white boy name. Johnston or Johnson? Remember that tall white boy? Yeah, I, My I bad. wound up hiring him in. I got like one more minute left on his memory card. My bad. Oh, shit, we went past the time. Yeah. <laughs> when I start talking, I just be saying real. everything, but it, and that don't even nick part of my life. Yeah, I got so many parts and just so many sections. But but, I, but I went on hiring the white boy, and he turned out to be good because I had him as my driver. Paid him good. That boy do anything. I about to tell him go there and beat the hell out of him. The tall white boy. Go, <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of balls. I like that in you. People knew he worked it on me, so nobody messed with him. <laughs> but I tell you what, man, boom, hell of a story. I think you need a book if you ain't already got one, man. Don't have one? Need a movie. Yeah, Iceman. I figure people could make this bigger <laughs> than the American Gangster. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For I sure. Mean, it's more than just this country. Yeah. <laughs>